wondering uh, in your dealings with Rodrigo, uh, what gets said after a missed 30 yarder and what have you learned about him from that miss and how he processes, how he recovers and, and you know, if he knows what he did wrong the minute he hit it or something. I thought he bounced back pretty well. Um, I want to say he had the miss prior to the, I want to say it was before halftime where they iced him. So I thought he responded pretty well to that. Um, yeah, it was a 30 yarder. Obviously we got to make all the kicks. But I think that, you know, this kid's played in a lot of big games. I think we can't ignore that. He's, you know, played in championship teams and hit big kicks in big games. And to me, he's he's shown that, you know, he can bounce back. He did it in, in week one, and then he came back prepared well last week. You know, we saw results on the field. So that was, that was, that was positive. Thank you. Zach Kiefer. Bubba, what's it like going from a 45-year-old kicker who's done it all to a undrafted kid who's 22, 23 years old. And, and, and what's Rodrigo's personality like? And how, how have you – what have you learned about him and, and how do you coach him differently? I would say the thing about Rod that, you know, similar to Vinny, that, you know, both guys are, you know, very strict routines. They like to be, you know – the one thing I don't do is I don't, I'm not going to overcoach – you know, a player's technique, especially while he's like in his like set or like when he's warming up, you know, there's things, if I'll see something, you know, I'll be like, oh, you were a little inside out on that or just give him like a tidbit to work with. I feel like more of the coaching goes on like in the meeting room um, when we're actually watching the tape, Hey, what'd you feel on this? I give those guys a lot of freedom. Um, I would say as far as Rodrigo with his, you know, his approach to the game, you know, he's a soft spoken kid kind of keeps to himself a little bit. Um, but he has some, you know, outgoing qualities to him as well. He's into, you know, sneakers like I am, you know, to a degree. You know, he's uh, – he likes rap music, you know, things like that where, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think that, you know, those are things that he'd be interested in, but he is. Um, you know, compared to Vinny, you know, Vinny was very regimented with his body. He, you know, had done it for so long and understood what he needed to do to stay on the field – a little bit different, you know, we're trying to get Rod on a program, seeing the same people every day as far as, you know, preparation to get his body right. And, you know, for practice, the warm up has been consistent. And it's really just being, you know, just finding that consistency and being as repeatable as you can every day with, you know, especially your, your mechanics, but just your process, you know, coach always talks about the process, the process, the process. Well, that is a lot of the process is getting your body ready having a routine, and then that gives you the ability to go out and have repeatable mechanics and, you know, production. Kevin Bowen. Hey, Bubba. Um, you guys dominated field position on Sunday. It seems like for Rigo, it's not just booming it into the end zone kickoff-wise, you know, every single kick. Is that kind of a conscious decision by you guys to try and let your coverage unit, you know, sneak a few yards out? You know, there's there's times in the game where – you're looking to force returns. There's times in the game where, you know, you're not looking, f you know, for a return. So it depends on what the situation the game calls for. You know, I've always felt like being, you know, a coverage player in the NFL, you know, when I was playing, like you don't get good at covering kicks unless, unless you cover them. So to a degree, you know, there's times where we want to be able to force returns and see what we have, you know, because at some point you're going to have to, you know, the weather is going to be a factor and you're not going to be able to just kick a touchback every single time. And even if you're trying to kick a touchback at times, you you may not be able to get the ball out of the end zone or you may have a miss hit or get under the ball. So in that regard, you have to be ready to, you know, be prepared to be able to cover. So there's times in the game where you want to force, there's times in the game where you're not looking to force, um, it really is just dictated on how, how the game's going and, you know, and how, how confident you feel in your personnel. So I think that, you know, we've done both here. You know, there's times where we're going to kick, you know, to force returns. There's times where ideally, you know, you don't want to force a return, but, you know, we're, I'm always going to play the situation in the game and to my personnel. We'll go two more here, Zach Kiefer. Bobby, you mentioned that uh, Rodrigo's into sneakers and rap music and stuff. And he said a couple of weeks ago, you know, the night before cuts, he spent the night talking to his girlfriend and, and building Legos. Um, he wears the rec specs on the field. 
you know, one of the coolest things about football is all these different guys from all these different backgrounds with all these personalities. Have you ever coached a kid quite like him? He seems like a pretty unique guy. Uh, he's definitely unique. I would say he's probably the most unique guy that I've coached at this point. I've only been coaching for six years, but even even as a player, he's probably the, the most unique player that I've been around. Even, you know, I've been on a bunch of different teams and play with a lot of, a lot of diff different people. Um, I would say some most time, not most times, but there's, you know, a good, a good amount of times specialists are a little, you know, different personality wise than some of the position players just, you know, I feel like it is just comes with the territory and that's just how it is. I think Vinny was a little different than some of the other guys I've been around. Um, Gaskowski, you know, in New England, you know, had a more similar personality to some of the position players, but I feel like at times, you know, kickers specialists can be a little bit more you know quirky to a degree for whatever reason but you know I don't think our guys are all like that I think you know they are they're all unique in their own ways but um you know they're all they're all of them are great guys and thankfully for me that they all work hard and have been performing well so it's been good what well, makes you say that about Rodrigo though that he's one of the most if not the most unique I would just say, I know, you know, I don't want to say too much here, but I, I mean, just there's not a lot of, you know, not a lot of NFL players that are building Legos, you know, and playing video games like that. And, you know, he is, and he's in, he admittedly is, you know, into that type of thing and whatever, whatever, you know, toot your horn, man. I, I'm, I support whatever he wants to do. So as long as he's making his kicks, I don't care what he does. <laughs> Steven Holder. Hey, Bubba, uh, you know, the, the safety would, would probably got the headlines, right, um, with, with um, Buckner getting the safety against Cousins. But the kick or the, the punt and guys downing it at the two-yard line, I mean, that's what really made that happen. Can you just kind of address, um, you know, what you guys do, how it sets the table, you know, for plays like that and how it all kind of comes together, you know, all those phases coming together? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, in addition to, you know, making a big play there, I just think that we're always talking about, you know, understanding the situation in the game. I'm always preaching it and trying to prepare my guys for, you know, situations that they're going to see and then being able to create and make a play when we need to. I think that in that instance there, so every Thursday, you guys probably know from coming out to practice, we'll lead off with a punt period. We do plus 50 punts where we're, we're working on down on the ball inside, you know, the five inside the 10. We have our, our roles for the gunners and then the position players and all that. And I think that we just, you know, we, I actually showed a clip on Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday night of us missing an opportunity to down a ball that was about to be, you know, it was it was tough. It was like right on the border of being on the goal line or on the one yard line. And we missed it. And I just showed it in the, in the meeting. I said, we got to make this, we have to be able to make this play this week. And for whatever, like, I don't know why, just a coincidence, we end up having an opportunity, similar type of scenario, and we end up capitalizing on it. So, and then I would say the next thing is just, you know, I think our guys have made a conscious, conscious effort with decision-making, especially in the return game. You know, it's unfortunate we got a call for a block in the back this week, but, you know, our guys are mindful of making conscious effort to not, you know, do those things, to not block in the back, to pull off. If you lose your guy, turn up and block the next guy. So we, me and Frankie have done a, at least try to do a good job of, you know, giving our guys, you know, the best examples to teach off of and, you know, harp on them. I should do one more here, Joel Erickson. It, it feels like Naheem is uh, pretty reluctant to throw up the fair catch. How important is that aggressive nature to getting you guys hidden yardage in the punt return game? Yes, I think he's improved. I think he's actually improved his decision making quite a bit. I think that you know, he's, he feels when, when we have, when we have space, we try to communicate with him from the sideline. I know coach Rathman's always yelling pretty loud to take it or to, or to not, um, whether he can hear that or not, I'm not sure. I know I can, but I think Naheem's done a good job of, you know, prepping and studying the punters that we're going against. Um, and then I think that he trusts his teammates that they're going to do their job to secure him on the catch, you know, it's always important, you know, that the top cover players on most teams are, you know, the guy that the personal protector who's really the quarterback of the unit and then the two gunners. So if, ideally you'd like to be able to stop those, those 
penetrating players and give yourself space. I think he trusts that we're going to do that. We've, you know, we've been doing that consistently the last couple of years. So hopefully we can keep, you know, giving him space and, you know, room to work back there. He's done a good job of being able to attack vertical with the football.